How's it guys? Welcome back to another FPL video from me, Davey FPL. This video is going to be the Game Week 22 review and then we're going to take a look towards Game Week 23 which promises to be quite an interesting one, especially with the transfer moves that should take place if some people are injured. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll hit that up later. Right now, let's just look at Game Week 22. I finished with 75 points, which was above the average of 49 um, points, which I was quite happy with. I only made the one transfer, which was Fabianski to Etheridge, which luckily paid off. Um, Fabianski obviously played the first game and ended up with nine points, and a lot of a lot of people were wondering, like, oh, did they make the right choice transferring him out? Obviously, for whichever um, goalkeeper you did transfer him out for, um, I decided on Etheridge over the Crystal Palace second keeper right now as he's injured. Um, I don't really rem can't really pronounce his name, but it's like Gu Guaitia or something like that. Um, I just kind of decided over him as if he did lose his place to Hennessy due to, I was kind of throwing it, a, 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 it up a little bit. I was kind of saying because of that recent controversy with that photo, I thought maybe Roy Hodgson would put him back in the team to give him a little bit of confidence and and you don't really want to let someone in the, that's down in the dumps sit there. So I, I, I was kind of a little bit screwed if um, Hennessy did come back, as then I would have only Button, and obviously Ryan comes back in a couple of game weeks. So I just decided to go for Etheridge. Um, I liked his fixtures. He only plays one of the top six in the next, I think, ten fixtures. And by that time, I will have wildcarded anyway, probably. So I can always wildcard him out. Um, so yeah, very happy with his 10 points, and obviously if you watch the Crystal Palace Huddersfield game, not Crystal Palace, Cardiff Huddersfield game, um, Huddersfield nearly got a penalty. Well, they did get awarded one and then it was taken away, but um, part of me was like, hey, let them take it. Maybe Etheridge can get another penalty save, and then he would have had even more points. But um, that's a little bit greedy. I'm very happy with his 10 points. So the transfer did pay off only by one point, but hey, every point matters, so I'm very happy with that. Then if we go and look at the defense, it was re not returns, but more points than um than than just for playing. Juan Bissaka, obviously you've heard about him, the historical three points, even though he conceded. Um, as I said in the last video, he just looks like a great option, great defender, um, probably gonna represent England in the future. So he's definitely one to look at. I know he's quite expensive if you don't have him now, 4.5, but if you're gonna play him, then buy him. Then Robertson with uh, his clean sheet and bonus points. Um, the very nice thing f about the Liverpool game was Robertson and Salah both shared the bonus points, so both of them got three. Great, um, great thing for my team as I have both of them. So Robertson with nine points just keeps on delivering. Um, the Liverpool double up also did work. It was something that I was considering, but I probably would have transferred out um, Dinier. So... I'm not too too unhappy with that. He returned the nice 12 points. He needed to, though, for my team. Ever since I brought him on um, into the Davy FPL team, he, he's not really been performing. He's been getting those two points as Everton have been conceding, but very happy with his performance. Obviously, the clean sheet and the assist, and then as bonus points as well. Then Hazard with the assist in uh, midfield. I was happy I didn't captain him, but I can understand those people that did. Um, he played up front, so I would have been happy to have captain him if I knew that. Um, he ended up only getting an assist, but that's better than a blank. Uh, I don't really know what to feel about Hazard. He's kind of hit the slope of, of a little bit of poor form right now. I know people um, are saying that you should keep him and be patient with him, but maybe you can't really argue against lack of form. Um, he's never kind of gone three game weeks without scoring or um, getting a big haul, um, if I can remember correctly. Okay, he did here, but here, here he was injured, so not not too stressed about that. But here he's kind of hit a little bit of of a run of form, but he does have Arsenal next, so he should be able to get something from that, hopefully. Then we hit up this the captain, Salah, with 11 points. He got that penalty, and then he, he missed a sitter, so I was a little bit annoyed about that because he could have had even more points, but it's it's uh, he was the best captaincy option this week. Um, unless you captain a defender, which I don't know if many people did. Then Pogba with that very nice assist against Spurs. Looks like a, a quality player. I actually watched the Spurs um, Man U game. And there was he, he could have scored at least two, um, I believe. He had that one nice shot where 
it was peeled back to him on the edge of the box and he he just it got a little bit deflected and then Lloris comfortably saved it so but he looks like a great option in a in a Man United team that's full of confidence right now so definitely want to get or keep um or buy in if you if you don't have him then Richarlison and Felipe Anderson I'm just going to kind of combine them because I was a little bit disappointed by them again uh, it seems like kind of a recurring event now uh, I was looking to get rid of them one of them this game week but we'll talk about more more about that in the transfers ahead I uh, very disappointing um they uh, but apparently Felipe Anderson did play well um he could have had a goal so maybe he's the one to keep Richarlison is kind of getting the opportunities but he's not he's not finishing them he doesn't seem like like that consistent of a of a on target shooter so I don't really know what to feel about that he does have very nice fixtures though so maybe he's worth the keep then Mr. Harry Kane, um, I do think that Spurs were unlucky not to score against Man U, but I do feel that they could have done better with their opportunities. Kane could have scored. He had some very nice opportunities, but ended up kind of fluffing his lines a little bit when it got to the shot. He did pick up that injury um, in the final minute of the, the Man United game, so a little bit of concern about that. I'll talk about that more in the Game Week 23 preview now. And then Jimenez with one point. Uh, Bali ended up getting sent off last night against Man City and he um, got subbed off at halftime for Priore, I do believe. So not too, not too upset, but I was hoping that he would get some returns. I do think it's a, it was a little bit harsh to take him off at half time. He, I think he's a great player, so he could have made something um, against that Man City team. But kind of hard when you're playing 10 against 11 at the Etihad against Man City. So can't really complain too much about that. Then the bench, Kamara didn't play. A little bit worried about him because apparently there was a, a training ground bust up or fight. So he, he was out of the squad. But that, as I said, this is all rumors. So maybe he's actually perfectly fine and he was just given a break. Kiko Firmenia with one point. Um, again, Watford seemed to be struggling, keeping a clean sheet recently. And then Doherty with one point, but I wasn't expecting anything from him as he was third on my bench. Um, very nice fixtures coming up, so I'll definitely be keeping him. So um, the 75 points did see me take a rise rank to 608 in the world, which I'm very happy with. Um, very happy with the green arrow. Very good game week. I'm just going to keep on pressing and try and get into that um, top a hundred in the world. So if we take a look at my team for next week, um, you'll notice something a little bit different about it is that I have actually have Kane as my captain. So I before the injury, I was going to captain Kane against Fulham. Um, I just think that Fulham are pretty bad defensively. If you saw on the weekend, they conceded two own goals, which is quite unheard of. So I was perfectly fine with captaining Kane. Um, obviously, Salah's a great option. I just thought that Kane was a little bit better for this game week. But with him being injured now, um, I don't really know what to expect about it. Um, I am going to wait for more news on him, as he does have very nice fixtures, so it's not worth transferring him out yet. But I will talk about what my plans would be if he stays or if he goes um, in the transfers now. So if we just run through the team for next game week, I've Etheridge against Newcastle away. Hoping for a clean sheet there. Newcastle don't really score that many, but it is being played at um, St. James's Park. So don't. hopefully he can get some returns there. Doherty versus Leicester. I'm hoping that he can come back strong and, and get some attacking returns and defensive returns. Robertson versus Crystal Palace. Good fixture. He should be getting something. And then Dini against Southampton. Um, Southampton have looked very strong recently. Obviously, they went even went down to 10 men against Leicester and still managed to get the win. So they'll be full of confidence, but I'm just hoping that Everton can and can be defensively sound and, and attackingly sound and kind of get a result there. Hazard versus Arsenal. You know Arsenal's defense, not very good. Hazard should score. Crystal Palace for Salah. Very good fixture as well. Definitely my captain if Kane does not play. Even could have been my captain if Kane played. So... I'm perfectly fine with Salah. He's been getting returns. Seems a must-buy right now with Liverpool's fixtures. Pogba against Brighton at home. Good thing to know about Brighton is away from home, they're, very, they're not that great. But at home, they are good. But Pogba's playing them at um, Old Trafford, so should get some returns there. Richarlison against Southampton. Um, good fixture for, for Everton. And then Felipe Anderson against Bournemouth. Also a good fixture. I think Bournemouth 
They've kind of picked up a little bit of defensive form, but they're still, um, still a little bit shaky at the back, so hopefully Felipe Anderson can um, execute on them. An uh, interesting thing to know is there's been rumors that Onartovic is probably going to be transferred, so Felipe Anderson, for me, then becomes their main man and their main form of attack, so that puts him in a good position in, that, in, in, the, in FPL. Then Kane, I've spoken about. Um, I'll just see how he is. And then uh, Jimenez versus Le Leicester. Hopefully he can get something. I have Kiko Firmeni on my bench, but he, he could play if I if I decide. Um, I don't really know. Watford are a little bit shaky at the back as well, and Burnley seem to be picking up a little bit of form, so don't really know. If I will play him, and then Kamara and Juan Bissaka, I'm not going to play. So now if we talk about the transfers now, so my original plan was probably to downgrade Felipe Anderson to um, someone like Camarasa and then upgrade Kamara to someone like Rashford, which I have exactly the right amount to do. So I will have to take a look at the price changes for that. This is what I'll play, and then I'll change from um, a 3-5-2 to a 3-4-3, three, three, obviously with Kamarasa dropping to the bench and Rashford coming on. Um, so this is what I was thinking about for, for my next transfers. I feel that Rashford's a very good pick at 7.4 7 mil. Um, playing as a striker in a top six team is always good, and he seems to be the favorite under Solskjaer, so hopefully he can do well. But if Kane is injured, there's a couple of options you guys can do. So if we just go to the forward options, yeah. Obviously, Obama Yang is an option, but I wouldn't be transferring him in off before the Chelsea fixture. Afterwards, he has some nice fixtures, uh, apart from the Man City game. But not looking that bad of an option. Um, he just seems to be not that consistent away from home, and you can see that he has quite a couple of home fixtures in the next um, six or seven. So the the two options I w was kind of considering was one of them was Aguero, but last night he did um, fail to start against Wolves, so I'm a little bit worried about that. It seems that Pep's going to rotate him and uh, Jesus until the UEFA Champions League games come up and um, so and so forth. I do think that Man City play midweek if I'm um, if I'm in if I'm correct. Uh, they play against Burton, but they should be resting players for that game. But that's also something to note if they do end up playing this midweek, because the other game is Chelsea versus uh, Man U. Let me just check. I don't know. Okay, I don't think they are playing. Um, I think it's the week afterwards. So just ignore what I said about that. The two options I kind of would go for right now is Rashford or Firmino. Um, I think those are two good options, especially with Liverpool's um, good run of fixtures. I also kind of am considering bringing in a Man City asset. That Huddersfield away fixture just looks too good um, to not have a player, especially with the way Man City's been playing. They've been playing quite well. So the options that I probably was thinking then is taking Kane out for Rashford and then taking probably Felipe Anderson or I can take out Richarlison. Let me just change this back to all players. And then bringing in Sterling. Um, you basically, if you're transferring out Kane for a cheaper, a cheaper um, forward like Rashford, you can kind of do anything with your team. As you can see, I still have 1.4 left in the bank. So um, you have endless options basically with this transfer. The one thing to note about the Man City assets are that game week 27 looks like it's going to be a blank for them. So you must just kind of navigate that and um, make sure you don't have too many Man City assets for that game. So you must just pay attention to, to Twitter. I'll be uploading a video soon on the double game weeks and blank game weeks and so and so forth so you guys can keep updated. But that's just one thing to, to keep in mind and one thing that's kind of putting me off um, Sterling a little bit is the whole he's going to be out in game week 27 because if you look at the fixtures they do have Huddersfield Newcastle and then they have Arsenal and Chelsea the thing to note is that these two games are at home so I do expect them to get results from that and I do expect Sterling to play because um, Man City are going to want to catch up to Liverpool in these coming game weeks they're going to have to play full strength every single time the other transfer that I was talking about is uh, Firmino so you're, you're, you could bring him in and then end up with the strike force of this. 
The only thing that I have against this is uh, I don't know who I will bench. Probably um, Richarlison as he's the the option that I think might not get that many returns this week. Um, so I will play, probably play 3-4-3 three, three in this format. So there's lots of options to take. Um, plenty, even if you want to bring Obama Yang. But uh, he did price drop this yesterday, so you could have that option. But as I said, if you're going to take out Kane, there's endless options of who to bring in. Um, the two I would go for is Rashford or Firmino. Um, that's just who I favor currently. I think those are both two great options and they should give you returns. And the op other option is obviously taking Kane, downgrading Kane to Firmino or Rashford and then upgrading one of your midfielders or one of your defenders or your other um, striking partner. So that's going to basically wrap it up for this video. As I said that um, I ended up on 75 points with a nice rank up to 608th in the world. One thing I also want to say is thanks a lot for 2,000 subscribers and then we are nearly at 600 followers on Twitter. So thanks to you guys who have always showed your support for me. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. More FPL content coming uh, in the weeks to come. I'll be doing this till the end of the season. And also follow me on Twitter for any comments you want to make or I'll post my teams and my thoughts on there. The one thing people have also asked me to do is help them with their teams. So um, if you need help, comment down below in the YouTube comments or just tag me on Twitter. Um, I reply to every comment and every tweet that gets thrown at me. So you don't have to worry about me not replying. I always will. Um, it's something that I, I really like is that I'm very interactive with my audience. So yeah, so please like the video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe for more and please share the video if you, if you want to. Um, and then also follow me on Twitter for more updates. But otherwise, this has been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.